Hello, gorgeous. Welcome to HG Radio, everything beauty, cancer, and inspiration. Here is your co-founder and host, Kim Becker. Hello, gorgeous, and thank you for joining us today. I'm your host, Kim Becker, and this is Hello, Gorgeous, everything beauty, cancer, and inspiration on Society Bites Radio, social interaction for the mind and soul. Our guest today is Lori Yacobi. In September, we celebrated Menopause Awareness Month, and creating menopause awareness, or as Lori likes to call it, getting smart, is one of her primary coaching activities. When she was hit out of the blue with her symptoms, it rocked her confidence, strained her relationship, and made it possible for her to find calm and balance in everyday life. When researching what was happening, she was frustrated by the lack of information, or worse, the widely ranging opinions and misinformation about menopause. She started a blog as a way to document her experiences and share useful resources with others. Her blogging connected her with several social media outlets related to menopause, where she found time and time again that the stories were the same as hers. Women all over the world being blindsided by symptoms and not knowing where to turn for help. Lori couldn't sit on the sidelines any longer. She knew that she needed to be more of an active part of the solution. The combination of her master's degree in human resource development 25 plus years of developing instructional programs and experience as an athletic coach and a Weight Watcher leader led her to menopause health coaching. She spent four years learning about menopause, including certifications in the third age women peri to post menopause and nutrition coaching. These days, she's dedicated to working with women to recognize their symptoms and provide tailored plans to navigate menopause and build a healthy foundation for many years beyond it. Hi, Lori, and welcome to the show. Hello. How are you, Kim? I'm doing well. I am so excited to have you. You know, it was interesting. You and I had had a conversation a couple of months ago, and, um, you know, we kind of danced around the possibility of you having your own show. Um, And so as we were talking, it was so funny. um, I thought about it, and I thought, you know, you needed to be a guest on my show because of what cancer treatment does to women. There are so many times where they put her in menopause, depending on the type of breast cancer, you know, whether it's estrogen driven or, uh, you know, hormone driven, or if it's something where she's had um, something to do with an ovarian cancer. And I thought the information that you have and the knowledge that you have to share would just be phenomenal for our guests. So I am so grateful and so excited to have you on our show today. Well, it's absolutely my pleasure. So let's start with the basics. What is menopause and when does it normally happen? Yeah, so this is a great question to start with because I think the first step in getting smart is to understand common terminology just to make sure that everybody's singing off the same sheet of music. So for most women, they will experience natural menopause. So in natural menopause, um, I tend to think of it in kind of three phases. So the first phase is perimenopause, and that's the time leading up to menopause. So it's the time when your hormones begin shifting, and it can begin in your mid-30s or early 40s, and it commonly lasts between 7 and 10 years, which is interesting because I think historically it was thought to only be about two years. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, And then menopause occurs when you've gone 12 months without a period. So it marks the end of our reproductive years. So technically menopause is one day or even one second. You know, it's that moment in time when you've been 12 months without a period. Um, But we often use that term and I probably will today um, just to refer to any of those symptoms that relate to our changing hormones. But in natural menopause, the average age in the United States is 51.2, if you want to be exact. Wow. Um, but the normal range can be anywhere between 35 and 60. Wow. I can't imagine going through menopause at 35. I mean, I didn't have my son until I was 35. Yeah. it's. Um, I, I've talked to many women uh, who have have gone through menopause even at 37, uh, natural menopause at 37. And um, I was having... 
dinner with somebody very recently who is 48 and she said, oh, I've, I've been through menopause early. And I said, well, you know, not really when right. you think about the average being 51, 48 isn't, you know, isn't that far off of the average. So right, right. there is a little bit of misunderstanding. I think people think of it as something that happens in your fifties, but it really can happen uh, anywhere in your most typically, you know, mid forties to about 60. Mm. And then our our final phase then is postmenopause, and so then that's all of that time after after your one day birthday of having p- not, no periods for twelve months, you're then in postmenopause, and for most of us uh, that can be you know twenty to thirty years of our lives is wow. spent in postmenopause. Wow. So no, those no. are the. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say. So yeah. So then, what are some of the- the symptoms associated with menopause? Like how does a woman know that she's beside, are there other things besides going without a period for 12 months that, that are symptoms of menopause? Yeah, there, there sure are. Um, but before I get into that, I just want, because I think for your listeners, some of them may be interested in this, in the term induced menopause. Oh yes, please. So what we were talking about before was sort of the, the three phases that happen in, um, natural menopause, but, um, in induced menopause, that occurs when menopause is caused by a medical treatment, as you were referring to earlier. Yeah. So if you've had both of your ovaries surgically removed, then menopause occurs on the day of surgery. So you don't have any of that perimenopause um, lead up that we were talking about. And as you also mentioned, some drug or radiation therapies actually damage the hormone, I mean, the or- ovaries and shut down hormone production. And so that can also cause menopause. Wow. So there's sort of the, these two, you know, there's the natural menopause, which most women will go through, but there's also induced menopause um, that can occur as well. Right. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. So then let's talk about some of the symptoms that are associated yes. with menopause. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, most of us, you see the comics and, and hot flashes uh, mm-hmm. or night sweats are kind of the predominant thing that you know, come to mind when you think about menopausal symptoms, but other symptoms, there's a, there's actually 34 recognized symptoms, uh, related to menopause. And really, I I promise I won't go through the list of 34, but (laughs) you know, there's some that are sort of these psychosomatic types of, uh, I'm not sure I'm using the right word, but, um, types of, of symptoms like memory lapses and brain fog, Um, crying, crying spells or sadness. Uh, A lot of women experience irritability and anger. Uh, Some women report feeling pain, panic or anxiety or even depression. Um, There are symptoms related to, you know, kind of our reproductive area. So vaginal dryness is a very common symptom. Uh, Loss of libido. Uh, Some women experience urinary tract infections or incontinence. And then there are some, a lot of physical symptoms as well, like hair loss or hair thinning is very common, uh, bloating and weight gain, especially around our bellies, uh, headaches, or some women even, uh, experience migraines, uh, itchy skin or tingling in your extremities and, um, breast and joint pain is also quite common. So, you know, probably the most important reason to be aware of this broad range of symptoms is just to recognize them for what they are and realize that, you know, you're not going crazy because I think a lot of women experience, you know, these things start happening to them that they're not used to. And they think, oh my God, I'm just going crazy. Um, and it, it's just because they're not necessarily aware of this, um, you know, how broad the range of symptoms can be. Right. And so would these symptoms be the same for someone who had faced induced menopause? Yeah. So the short answer is yes. Uh, Women who experience induced menopause can experience the same symptoms. Um, But the one thing that's important to note is they don't have that typical perimenopausal experience where they've got this gradual transition leading up to their final period. So instead with surgical menopause, You know, menopause occurs abruptly on the day of surgery and with menopause induced by drug treatments, you know, there may be a short transition as the damaged ovaries shut down um, the production of hormones. So because of this more abrupt loss of hormones in induced menopause, um, typically women experience more drastic symptoms than Mm. women who go through natural menopause. That's interesting. I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have thought about that, but you're right. It's probably just such a shock to the system that what was there 
didn't slowly leave your system. It just abruptly was removed. So yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, that's the that's the going in uh, thought right now. So what are the causes of these symptoms? Well, it's a good question. I mean, I think most of us are aware that our hormones you know, start to flux as we go through this transition. Um, and our, you know, there's a bunch of hormones in our bodies that sort of work together, you know, like a symphony is a good way to say it. And so when those hormones start fluctuating, it's kind of like one instrument in the symphony maybe starts to be a little off key. Um, but estrogen and progesterone, I think are two of the key hormones uh, to talk about. And those are the two of the hormones that our bodies start to produce less of. Um, and as we talked about this fluxing is going to be more gradual and natural menopause and more abrupt and induced menopause. But I think the reason, um, to talk about progesterone and estrogen is that these two hormones are not only important for our reproductive functioning, they actually have important tasks to do all over our body. So mm. they have, fun they are responsible for functions in our brain, in our muscles, in our gut in our breasts, in our eyes, our heart, our lungs, and our blood vessels. So if you think about decreasing levels of estrogen and progesterone in all of these places in your body, you can kind of start to see why some of those seemingly unrelated symptoms we just talked about could be linked together as symptoms of menopause. Right. And do you recommend anything? So is there, and I'm going off a little bit, but so, I mean, I've heard of women that go through like hormone therapy, but obviously right. it's synthetic hormone. It's not a real hormone. Or is there some sort of a supplement or something that they can take to kind of help as they go through these symptoms to make them less drastic? Yes, for sure. For sure. Um, so hormone therapy, um, has kind of gotten a bad rap, uh, in, in the early 2000s, but it is widely, widely proven to address many menopausal symptoms, um, particularly uh, the vasomotor symptoms, which are be like your hot flashes and um, vaginal dryness. And the bad rap that hormone therapy received in the early 2000s has actually since been disproven. And so hormone therapy is now considered safe for most women uh, with no, without adding a risk of uh, an increased risk in breast cancer. Uh, the current guidelines from the national, um, I mean, I'm sorry, from the North American Menopause Society is uh, to use the lowest dose for the shortest amount of time. Yeah. Uh, to, and that's typically five to seven years. But even for women who are unable to take hormone therapy, there are many non-hormonal medications uh, that are available as well as alternative medicine and supplement options that can relieve those symptoms. And I think the best thing to do is to just sit down and have a conversation with your doctor about Agreed. the best course of action for your particular situation. Yes, I agree. Yeah. So if, if a woman was beginning to notice some of these symptoms, what's the first piece of advice that you would give her? Well, um, not surprisingly, I'm going to stay on my bandwagon about getting smart <laughs> um, as, as step one. That's right. Um, and the reason for that is there's really a significant lack of education around menopause. And that's both for us as women, as well as for our health practitioners. So for example, with regard to women, um, there was a study done in 2018 where more than 80% of premenopausal women said they were only moderately aware of what to expect in menopause. Mm -hmm. So kind of just like I was. Um, but that same survey found that the more women knew about menopause, the less effect it had on their lives. So, you know, in that sense, knowledge really is power. And why do you feel that it's so taboo for people to talk about menopause? I mean, there are so many, it seems like the world today, people talk about everything, you know, especially with social media, right? You put yeah. your whole life up online. Why is it that this seems to be such a taboo subject? You know, I think I'd be a millionaire if I knew the answer to that question. <laughs> um, you know, part of it is I, I think that the study of menopause is really still in its infancy. I mean, it wasn't, I mean, women didn't, didn't even live long enough to, you know, have much of a life post-menopause until the early 1900s. Mm -hmm. So.